Um, okay, so let's um, let's uh, create here um, a directory where we can do some server-side programming for for this for this section, and we'll call it uh, lectures on Wednesday. On Wednesday, and uh, let's uh, let's do um, uh, under here. Uh, let's uh, create a lecture for Mongo. Right, so let's create Mongo. And let's uh, create a, a, a little uh, JavaScript here that uh, will play around with uh, movies. Right? And uh, let's make sure that we're here. Console uh, log uh, movies. And so let's, uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's run this from the server. Let's include it from the server. Let's require the uh, lectures on Wednesday, Mongo, and then movies. So if we run this, if we restart our server, it says that we are under movies. OK, so we're in there, right? We are in this console right here, OK? Make, make, just making sure that we're loading the right thing. Uh, and let's put this inside of a, a, a um, Node.js module. So let's do a module. And then exports and do a function here, and just make sure that we are in the right place. So we'll do uh, console uh, log uh, movies app, right? And here to be able to to uh, execute that, we'll we'll add this uh, this uh, invocation of that of that module, right? So if we re if we rerun, let's see. Okay, we are in that module. Very good. We are in the correct module. And in that module, let's do a couple of things here. All right? What uh, we're going to do here is we're going to try and insert things into that database. Right? Notice that there are already uh, records in that, in that, uh, in that uh, database, in that um, a collection. Right? Uh, so to be able to, to interact with that, with that database, uh, we're going to uh, use uh, the, the library, the mongoose library, which, which uh, abstracts a little bit the, uh, the, the, the nitty-gritty details of interacting with MongoDB directly. All right? So let's, let's grab the mongoose library. We say var uh, mongoose. We can require the library from here. All right? And mongoose allows you to uh, do things such as declare, um, you know, declare schemas for uh, for a, a type of object that you want to make sure that you want to validate every time you insert or update the, the object that it follows certain rules, right? So to do that, we can create a movie uh, schema, right, using Mongoose. And one of the, uh, one of the uh, classes that uh, Mongoose provides is a, this, a schema uh, object that allows you to instantiate uh, a new schema that uh, describes the, uh, the structure of that, of that piece of data, right? So for instance, uh, movies might have a title, right? That are strings. Uh, they might have a, a rating, right? Maybe they have a plot. Okay. Uh, maybe they have um, uh, a cast, right? Of folks, and these might be the names of many actors. So maybe an array of strings, right? Um, it might have a poster. Right, uh, it might have the uh, the date that it came out, right? So release date, release date. So that's a type date, okay? Um, it uh, might have um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, gross in uh, gross. What is it? Um, box office. So it's a number, right? It might have. Might, we might want to also track the date that we created the record, right? So, so for instance, this was uh, uh, created, and this is a date. Um, now, typically, what we want to be able to do is that for the database to be able to automatically right, set this date. Right, whenever we insert it, uh, we wanted to automatically, uh, uh, you know, timestamp it when the record was created. Uh, so, to do that, uh, Mongoose allows us to do that as well. So, instead of just providing a, a native uh, primitive data type here. Right. Instead, we can provide a meta meta object, right? Of which we can say that the type, uh, the type is date. Right. So this, uh, this here, 
is equivalent to this right here. Right? But because it's, it's an object now, you can do additional configuration. Right? Uh, so, uh, so for instance, uh, you could say that the default value, the default value for this record, if you don't provide a value already, right, we can default it uh, to use the following. Right? So you could maybe you can say uh, new uh, date. Or you can say, uh, no, you can say uh, date dot now. Date that now, right, is the value, right, of the current uh, clock, right, at the server side, right? Whatever the server current time is, is, part, is, is can be ex ex accessed by date dot now, right? Okay, so that's the value that it's going to take, right? Whenever it instantiates this object, it's going to look at the, uh, at the current date. It's going to use that as the value for, for the created. Make sense? Okay? All right. Um, uh, you can you can also say that in rating, okay, in rating, uh, you can be a little more specific. You can say that uh, rating can only be uh, from a uh, a select uh, approved um, uh, 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 values, right? It cannot be just anything. Um, so we could we could say that it is a it is a string, right? But it can only be the following strings. Right, it cannot be anything but these strings, right? So it could be that uh, it, you can say that it's an enumerated data type of which the only possible values, valid values, it, are the following. It could be G, right? It can be PG, uh, it can be PG13, right? Or it can be R, right? So it can only be those valid values. If if the value of the rating is 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 not those, right? The, the, it will not be uh, inserted into a database, and you give some 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 exception. Yes. So, is the best practice It should be everywhere, right? It should be as early as possible. It should be validated on the client side, even, right? Uh, you know, if you select or if you ha you know if you have a a, a type. Input fields, right? Uh, not that you would do that. Typically, you would maybe have a drop down, right? Uh, but say it's an input field, you would validate it as early as possible and as 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 as, as soon as possible and as as frequently as possible. So you want to validate it at the at the front end. You want to validate it on the server level at the service level layer, and then when you validate it again at the at the database layer. All right. So the data might have come in wrong from the from the client. Either somebody, you know, uh, because it might have come in not only from the client, which might be good validation, but it com can come from a batch file or from some, you know, some import that might be using the same service, right? Uh, but uh, it's not guaranteed that it has been validated. Sure. Right? So if you want a centralized place for these validations, then you would make that as a, like a Yeah, th this is your last resort. No, yeah. Right. Yeah, probably will be part of the model, right? When in the setters and getters, right? When you set it, right? Um, you know, it won't let you set something that is wrong, for instance, right? Nevertheless, <laughs> e even then, right? Something could go wrong, and this is your last layer level uh, of defense, right? That you're not, you won't accept bad data. Okay, uh, data is as good, you know, as uh, is as valuable as it um, represents reality, right? Um, uh, you know, having lots and lots of data that is uh, er erroneous has very little value. Okay. Um, okay. So we have a schema. We say that uh, any records that we want to insert or update have to match this 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 structure. Okay. Uh, notice that none of these are required. Uh, we could say that certain things are required. Right. Uh, we could say that um, uh, we could say that uh, the type is a string here. Right, and we can say that th at least this uh, re required, right? At least this one you need to give me, right? So I won't accept. I, I, it's okay if you draw, if you leave everything, right? But I will not accept a a, a movie without a title. Okay, uh, so there you go. So there, so uh, I, I'm okay. So for instance, the plot is uh, is um, is optional. You don't have to give me the plot. Right? You don't have to give me the poster, but you have to give me the title. Make sense? All right. Um, all right. So once we have this uh, this uh, uh, you know uh, dis description of uh, of the schema, 
you know, very, very similar to what you would do uh, using a class in Java, right, or in any other object-oriented. You have some schema describing what the, what the uh, va uh, valid structure of the object or instances are. After you have that, we actually want to be able to start creating instances of these things, right? So let's do that. Um, and so let's, uh, uh, to do that, we're going to create another object, movie model. So this, this object that we're going to create here is an object that's going to give us the API to be able to actually interact with the database, right? So that we can actually insert or retrieve or update or delete instances of these, of this, uh, of, of movies, right? And we get, we create it again from mongoose, mongoose uh, using model. Right, so model, uh, we need to give it a unique identifier, right? That will be known across all mongoose, right? So, um, so I'm going to use uh, the the same name as the variable. It doesn't have to be, uh, but this is going to be a unique identifier, right? That will be known across. So you can't you have another mo model that has exactly the same name, okay? Um, and you're going to tell it also the schema, which in this case is the movie schema movie schema scheme no okay movie schema there we go that means that that uh, this model is going to allow us to insert update delete right and, and and manipulate objects that are going to follow the following structure okay it allows us to insert so let's let's try to insert something okay so let's create a brand new uh, movies, so we'll say we'll go movie model, uh, and I want to create or insert both ways. You can use either one, uh, and, and and the create function uh, allows us to provide an actual instance that we want to store in the database. Okay, um, and uh, so um, uh, wait a minute, I, I forgot to do something here. So let me show collections. Uh, I'm going to drop. Right, so uh, db dot movie models dot drop, right? Like the name suggests, is going to remove that collection, right? It uh, removes it. Uh, if it's no longer there, and I try to drop it again, it's going to say false. I didn't find any of that. So if I do show collections, notice that movie models is no longer there. You see that? All right. All right. So the the point that I wanted to make is that uh, when when this gets inserted into a database you'll notice that it will recreate that collection. It's going to use the name of the collection right here, right, as a basis for the name of the collection uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the database, right? Uh, so let's try it. Let's, uh, let's create a brand new um, uh, uh, instance object. I'm going to say title, and this is uh, going uh, to be um, any other James Cameron movies? Any any older ones or huh? Avatar. I think I had Avatar already. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna do that. Let's uh, let's now refresh the server. Let's refresh the server. Okay, it didn't complain. That's good. Uh, so if I do show collections, notice that indeed movie models is back there. See that? All right. And if I do a db dot uh, movie models. Right, and I do a find. Indeed, we we see our avatar there. See that? Uh, uh, plus the uh, see the created, right? That timestamp was created for me. Um, uh, also, uh, we have an, an empty array of cast, right? That uh, we, I didn't I didn't provide any, any cast information. That makes sense. Okay, um, but but notice that it it grabbed the name of the model, right? The name of the model that I gave it here, right? And it uh, arbitrarily, what it did is, is uh, notice that it pluralized it. See that? It pluralized it. So it make, makes a good attempt at trying to pluralize whatever you give it, right? Uh, you know, it has its own dic dictionary and thesaurus. Uh, it knows that fish, the plural of fish is not uh, fishes, right? Uh, so it knows how to pluralize. So it's pretty good at, at pluralizing things, right? Nevertheless, I don't like the fact that it, you know, it takes the liberty of choosing the names of the collections for me, all right? So you can instead override it and say, no, 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 use the name that I'm giving you, okay? I want you to use the following collection, right? Use this collection, right? I can say, I'll call it movie, 
a Wednesday, right? Movies on Wednesday, Wednesday night movies. Uh, so if I run this again, right, and uh, and then I ask for the collections, uh, we see there that it's movie dash Wednesday. See that, right? Uh, so it is. Uh, so presumably inserted uh, the uh, movies in there. I can say db dot uh, movies on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday dot fine. Okay, wait a minute. That might not be. But that that is not a valid name <laughs> for a collection. Um, let's uh let's actually use uh, dot Wednesday. I think that's a valid name. Let's run that again. Dot. There it is. Okay. Actually, you can use dot notations to uh, to namespace your databases, right? So, for instance, you might have. Uh, you know the same database, but collections that might be used uh, in in different contexts, right? You might have a collection that is used uh, in development, another collection that, that are used for for QA, another one for production, right? That will allow you to uh, use different development environments, right? For testing, for development, for 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 production, and depending on the environment, you have different different uh, different data for testing purposes. Make sense? Right. So you, so you have different environments. All right. Awesome. Um, all right. So we've inserted. Uh, the uh, that movie. Uh, let's let's uh, insert another one. Terminator two. So let's run it again. And if we do a find, notice that we have Terminator two. Notice that this is becoming hard to read. So I can always pipe it through uh, Pretty, and it makes it a little bit easier to read. All right. So there we go. We have Avatar, Terminator two. Um, Okay, and uh, we can say uh, another one. We can say, um, let's see, uh, aliens. We can have plus the cast uh, is uh, Sigourney Weaver. How do you spell Sigourney Weaver? Sigourney. Is that right? No. Probably with an I, right? How do you spell the last name? Ah? G. O U R and Weaver is Weaver. <laughs> I don't know. Or W W no, okay, let's let's run this again. Uh, so there we go. So we have the cast, right? We have the, the creator, the title, and whatnot. Alright, so we have a couple of, of movies in there. Uh, we can um, we can uh, let's comment that out. Let's uh, let's try it and retrieve all the movies. Let's retrieve all the movies, and we can say movie model movie model dot find. So find, you know, the same function that we used earlier and manually. We can do uh, this find over here. So if we if we run this, uh, does, nothing seems to happen, right? Nothing seems to happen. And uh, uh, the reason is that that was an asynchronous call that went out to the server, right? And it did something. It actually did find something, but we were never ready to receive the information, right? Unfortunately. It doesn't work like this, right? Movies, right? This is the intuitive thing that you would do, right? This is a find me all the movies, right? And then just retrieve them to me, right? Uh, this is a, um, you know, this is the von Neumann, uh, you know, synchronous uh, uh, execution line by line, but this is not synchronous, right? It's asynchronous. So we need to use uh, uh, the promises mechanism to be able to talk to the, uh, to the, this other, um, this other uh, process, right? Uh, so to introduce, to use the, um, uh, the, 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 the promises here, uh, the dot find method returns a promise uh, object, right? That uh, has a function called then that allows us to register for a callback, right? So for instance, we can then provide here a function that can receive as, as an argument or as an attribute the uh, movies that comes back from the from the from the uh, database server, right? And then we can do a console log movies. Okay, so if we run that, uh, it lists the uh, movies here on the on the console. Make sense? Everybody good? All right. Uh, or we can retrieve a single movie. We can query and say, no, only retrieve me the following movie, the one that whose title is uh, aliens, right? So if I run that again, notice that it uh, comes back with with an array of one single element. See that, right? Uh, even though it was only one, it retrieves uh, the, the a, a, an array, right? So so find the find method always returns an array, 
right? Even if, if it's only one, okay? Uh, something more common that, uh, that, that we typically do is that uh, we want to search things not by title, but also oftentimes by ID. So we can put, oops, sorry, we can put the IDs here, so underscore ID, and provide the ID right here, yes? Right, if we rerun that again, notice that we get the same exact uh, array of the same object, right? The same instance, make sense, right? Uh, but since finding things by ID is such a common use case, right? Um, um, and, uh, and we don't want to have to remember that it's only one, and I really want just the first one, right? Uh, there is a syntactic sugar for this that allows you to instead provide a find by ID method, right? That allows us to drop this and just provide the ID as an argument, okay? Uh, so if we run it again, notice that we get the same exact uh, response, but not just, not exactly, notice that this one is not an array, you see that? Right, because it, it understands that the, the ID is a primary key. There's only one of them, one of them, so it returns just that one that matches that criteria. It's just syntactic sugar, right? Underneath, it just uses find. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't specify in, in the assignment. Uh, the, o the only thing that I would say is that uh, for the, the ID version, I would use find by ID. Only just to practice, uh, just, just, just another one. Yes, yeah, just, just to practice on one of them. They all use underneath just find. Right? These are all syntactic sugars for, uh, um, for find underneath. Yeah. And then should we do anything Uh, we're going to use another promise. You can install your own promise mechanism. Right, right now we're using the, the, the default one. Right? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the latest version of Mongo deprecated uh, this particular API. Yes? Yep, Q. Dollar sign Q. Yep. If, if, you, if you're familiar with dollar sign Q, go ahead and use, use it. Yes, uh, there's a couple, there's a few uh, libraries. Uh, yep. If you if you know how to uh, li um, promise, I mean uh, libraries, you're certainly welcome to use it. Yep. Okay, so uh, so there we go. So we we can find, we can create things. How about update? We can update uh, movies. We can say uh, updates, right? And provide um, a uh, a filter, so we can we can refer to a particular instance that we want to f that we want to update. Right, and then provide also the the uh, the attributes. Right, what do we want to do with that? Right, we want to uh, set just like we did a, a uh, earlier uh, manually. We're doing it again, but programmatically. Right, from from uh, from JavaScript. Right, so we want to uh, set the um, uh, let's see, what do we want to set? Uh, we want to set the rating. We want to set the rating. Uh, to be R, um, and uh, my wife got really mad when I showed it to my 11-year-old, uh, uh, but he loved it, and I'm taking him to see Covenant uh, later this spring. <laughs> uh, so if I, if I change that, so it says, okay, I, I indeed was able to uh, modify it, and you can see those changes in the CLI, right? You see that aliens, right? Notice that the rating is R. Right, that it, that it modified it correctly, make sense, right? Or I can just remove it, right? I can um, uh, say, uh, let's comment that out. Right, we can say um, a movie model dot uh, remove, and we can provide uh, an argument like the ID of what we want to remove. Uh, notice that uh, if I call remove just like this, right? It won't just uh, remove everything. Uh, like you would expect maybe in relational databases, if you do a delete uh, from a table and you don't provide a where, right, it's a little dangerous. Uh, not the case here. If you just do a remove, it just will ignore, right? It, it won't, do, won't remove anything unless you provide a criteria. So we want to remove that particular object. And, and so select that. There we go. Uh, we run it, and hopefully it'll... Remove it. Oh, it didn't remove it. Wait, what? 
Oh, maybe it's not remove, it's delete. Is it delete? No, it's not delete. Uh, what is it? I thought it was remove. No? no delete, uh, wait, remove? Is it remove? ID. Is it still there? Did I copy this right? ID, remove, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, let me try with title. Aliens. Run it. It's not removing it. Why are you not removing it? Am I missing something? Model, remove. Uh, let's see, what did I do here? I'm pretty sure I deleted remove, yeah. Remove ID. Then why are you not removing? Movie model. Aliens title. Let me see. Um, okay, so we can say then. And the first function gives us a status of of what is going on, right? Uh, if it was able to remove uh, any uh, any um, uh, records, uh, or you can also provide a second function. The second function will be invoked if there's an error, right? So we can we can uh, maybe print out the error if there is an error. So we can say console log uh, is there are are there any errors? Uh, or let's look at the status, right? Status. Uh, and let's run this. Uh, let's see. Uh, what did it print out? Results. Oh, wait, it says OK. Oh, it did remove it. What? <laughs> OK, all right, whatever. OK, so it did remove it. Um, all right, so uh, I, did you follow that? All right, so those are the four basic commands, right? But what we really want to be able to do is do it from uh, and a user interface, right? An application. Let's so let's build an application around this, right? Uh, let's create, for instance, let's use uh, Express uh, to be able to. Uh, yes. So I guess would remove only work if it's followed by the. Is that um. Uh, I'm, I guess. Uh, uh, so all right. So it might be also that um, uh, this. The, the, there's two versions of each one of these. Each uh, each one of these functions uh, works in two ways, right? Uh, it, it works in having a dot remove and then followed by a promise uh, or by a function that you can provide here. It's a callback, right? A callback function that will be invoked, right? If this is, you know, once this is complete, right? And it will provide here um, a status and error, okay? If you don't provide the function, it doesn't call the, uh, calls them, okay? That's what's happening, all right? I was not providing the function, right, and it was ignoring my call. Okay, that's what it was. Thank you. <laughs> I remembered. Yeah, so there's, there's two. All, all of these have two syntax, right? One of them is a provide a callback, right, which I will call at some point in the future, uh, or use the promise uh, API, right? Uh, the problem with using this syntax, right, the problem of using the callback syntax is that if you have, if you're manipulating many different collections, right, uh, that you need to manipulate sequentially, meaning first I need to insert that, then I need to update this, and then I need to delete from here, and then I need to update, the, and those are need to be executed in sequ sequence. Because they're asynchronous, right, the only way that you can guarantee, uh, you know, that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it executes in a particular order is to nest Right, the query is one inside of another. See that? Uh, so, so if you have many of those, you end up with code that is, you know, it's just, just, you know, you have lots and lots of nesting, one inside. It becomes very, very hard to read. You know, it becomes very, very hard to read. And that's what, that's actually the reason that the uh, promises, right, were invented, right? So that uh, you could, you could instead of writing all these, you know, heavily nested uh, 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 commands, right? So you can write them sequentially one after another uh, 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 ver uh, uh, vertically as opposed to horizontally, right? 
just nesting. So that's that's one of the main reasons why they invented the uh, the promise API, right? You you send back an object which you register inside there. You can make another call and you return another promise, right? Which you have another then underneath. So you can have then 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 then, right? Uh, that that's much easier to read, right? One after another. We'll we'll get to those. We'll, we'll do a whole bunch of those later on. All right. Okay, let's uh, let's take a, a, a short break, and we'll come back. We'll uh, we'll keep working on this. All right.